everyone, it's Jess from Camera By Your Side, and I'm here with Sleep On It. Tonight is the opening night of the As It Is tour, and this is your first national tour. So how did you guys prepare for this? We didn't. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, we kind of just uh, tried to save up a little extra money. We're going to be gone an extra week more than we used to. Um, so kind of practiced a couple extra songs so that we don't get bored playing the same set for four and a half weeks. Um, I don't know, TJ, did you do anything differently for this tour? No, um, we just got done on another tour a couple weeks ago, so we we practiced, like, I think once uh, in between because we all work and everything, but um, I think we're, you know, we feel pretty confident with the songs we've been playing and um, a lot of, like, the crowds on uh, the past couple of tours and this tour, are a lot of, like, new faces, so it's, um, it's cool to uh, meet a lot of new friends and uh, have these have uh, everyone hear the songs for the first time. Now, for people who aren't familiar with you guys, can you go into the history of your band? How'd you guys get started? Where'd the name come from? Okay, so <laughs> uh, Zach is our newest addition. Uh, he joined the band about a year and a half ago. Um, the band started in like late 2012, early 2013. Uh, we're from Chicago, Illinois, um, and uh, Jake, our other guitarist. Uh, he named the band. He had a couple other ideas in mind, but uh, as he tells the story, as legend goes, he was on the CTA train, and he was debating between a couple other names, and he said, you know what? I'm just going to sleep on it and think of a name tomorrow, and then he was like, boom, that's it. Got it. So that's where the name came from, I guess. Um, I, I just tell everybody it came from the Meatloaf song because that's, yeah, as a great song, great artist, uh, and I also love Meatloaf. Also the food. I was gonna say we love the food too. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like where we started. Um, and uh, yeah, as we mentioned before, this is our first, like I guess, really full national tour, East Coast, West Coast, Canada for the first time. So um, we are really excited to be here, and we're really uh, thankful for uh, the opportunity. Now a year ago, you guys almost broke up. I was reading things online, and now you're signed to Equal Vision. So you guys have had a really great experience as a band. Can you talk a little bit about that journey and going through all of that? Definitely. Um, signing to Equal Vision Records was kind of a blessing because I remember when I did join the band, like everyone was it was kind of down spirited. I mean, we were all kind of broken from like me being in a past band and that not working out and them losing their singer. So we were all kind of like in a weird spot. And then God bless Johnny Minardi for hearing two demos in our basement and then being like, you guys are going to be a good band. And then we laughed. And now we're signed to Equal, Equal Vision Records with a record coming out later this year. Um, so it's been a really crazy year. Um, everything has been moving really, really fast. And it's just, it's been really cool to kind of just see where we were a year, a year and a half ago almost when we kind of, when I kind of joined the band to where we are now. Um, it's just been a wild ride. Do you have anything other than that you'd like to add? Uh, no, no, yeah. I mean, that, that about sums it up. Thank cool, you. thanks. Now, you guys put out an EP in the fall. You worked with Derek from State Champs. What was that like, and how did you guys work with him? How did that collaboration happen? Where that come from? We did work with Derek. He's a sweet, sweet boy. Um, he, it was one of those things where when we were kind of writing the EP, um, we were really happy with where everything was, but um we were just kind of talking about like anything we could do to make the record better and we were really happy with the music of everything but there was a couple songs where the melodies were kind of like you know and then we were thinking who writes some of the best melodies in pop punk and we were like Derek Scanio from State Champs um so Derek had actually produced a record at the studio we record at ABG Studios in Crown Point with Seth Henderson uh prior to us working with him so we had Derek reach out and the label reach out and everything kind of just work together and he helped us whip up some new melodies for the things that we weren't exactly certain about um and yeah that was great he just kind of wasn't hesitant about any idea he had and pretty much like we'd retract by day and then every night we'd kind of go over some new stuff or whatever we were going to do the next day which is pretty sick yeah yeah we actually had derek uh work with us for the ep um he kind of came in at like the tail end for some vocal stuff but for the record he was there for like pre-production uh so he was there and kind of like we went over the songs and kind of played them live and like restructured a few things here and there. So he really had uh, some really cool input as uh, into like song structure as well as like melody and stuff. But uh, yeah, he's just like uh, uh, we consider him a friend now, and um, I really think his input really made the record better. 
And uh, it was cool. We just got to, like, hang out and do music all day. And then at night, we would just drink High Life and hang out in the hot tub and uh, listen to The Dangerous Summer and cry uh, every night. So it was um, very joyful slash sad slash cathartic <laughs> record process. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> we love you and miss you. Now, following the EP, you guys are working on a fi final full-length record, which will be out with Equal Vision. You're expecting this summer. What has that been like working on that? And you have you finished it? Can we expect anything soon? Um, probably not this summer. Probably later in the year. Um, and it was really hard. Writing writing a full-length record was something I was none of us were really prepared for. Because like we're 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 so used to writing songs in like batches of like five or six and just like making them really cool, and then like we were like oh we have to write double that and make that still as good as these five songs, so I mean we didn't really have much time once we finished recording the EP we basically just kind of like still dove in to just keep on writing new music, um, and again that's kind of where Derek came in with pre pro and like we were sending him demos the whole time back and forth kind of having him tell us what's good what can we what we could work on. Um, but it was it was kind of different, you know. We we really wanted to focus on making the lyrical content a little deeper, a little more meaningful than the EP was. Um, I really just like to think we pushed ourselves a little more than we did before. Um, if you'd like to add, yeah. I think uh, with the EP we were just like a little more concise with like what we wanted it to be. Uh, there were some songs that we like wrote before the EP came out that we were kind of like, ah, this is maybe like a little bit too like off the wall for the EP but uh, that made it on the record um, so I think that I like we went into it uh, we also it was a very quick writing process uh, we only had like uh, maybe like two three months to write it after the EP um, but uh, I think that we really kind of pushed the, the boundaries and really kind of went into it like thinking of like what this will sound like listening to it from front to back not just individual songs uh, another cool thing is we wrote a song with uh, Will Pugh from Cartel in Nashville back in the fall. Uh, so that was like a really cool experience too, and that song is on the record. So I think um, we had some really cool minds at work that, that made this uh, a really, something that we're really proud of. And um, it's, yeah, we just got a mix for it, and it's, it sounds awesome so far, so we're pretty pumped. Yeah, we're really, really happy with kind of like the different inputs and the different ideas that everyone kind of brought with it. Um, Seth is a really big part of that too. He adds a lot of things like kind of on the fly when we're tracking. But yeah, we're just really happy with how it came out. Now, working with Will from Cartel is amazing. Derek, also amazing. Have you guys had anyone you've encountered, whether it was in the studio or at an event like the APMAs or out on the road on tour, like with As It Is, that you've been super starstruck by or just like totally in awe of? Yes. Um, when it wasn't really on a tour, it was just kind of at a show. Um, we all kind of went to see Acceptance like a year and a half ago and um, meeting Jason Venna was just kind of like I my, my jaw was kind of on the floor and I was with Johnny actually when I met him and Johnny was just like oh yeah this is Zach and Jason's like hey dude what's going on I'm like <laughs> hi because um, Phantoms by Acceptance is just a perfect record um, but meeting Will was really 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 kind of cool for me because Cartel's been one of my favorite bands for a long time um other than that i mean i met patrick stump once and i almost cried so yeah i mean uh like everyone that we meet is just they're just like normal people they're just like normal humans and uh it's been cool to interact with a lot of people that we, we've really like looked up to over the years and stuff um but everyone's been really sweet to us i think the only time i've really ever felt starstruck was at and we were at riot fest and i almost walked right into jesse lacy and that that was i felt a chill down my spine you know I shivered. Um, but other than that, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I mean everyone's been very supportive, and uh, other bands. We um, we got to work with uh, John Nolan and Taking Back Sunday on a uh, benefit comp for the ACLU called Music for Everyone, and they kind of reached out to us and they wanted us to be a part of it, and uh, that was a really cool experience to work with them and their management. Um, so uh, we're, we're very grateful for all the opportunities that we've had so far. Now, as a band, I've seen you guys use social media pretty actively and pretty awesomely. Now, how do you guys, do you guys kind of take turns running the Sleep On It Instagram and Twitter? I see you put guitar tabs up, which is awesome. But how do you guys as a band feel about social media? Because it's so important right now. 
neither of us really control the social media. Um, that would be sweet, sweet Yako Bean, Jacob. Um, he is kind of our social media guru. He's the guy that will, like, sit on his phone for two hours and, like, keyword search our own band and, like, all of our names and just, like, favorite shit so that people follow the band. Um, and then, like, he pretty much runs everything. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, Teddy does the guitar tabs. I, I don't really remember where that came from. But, yeah, Jake is really the social media god, and he kind of keeps all that in line. But, um, yeah, you do the guitar tabs, though. Yeah, uh, well, that was just something that like a couple people reached out and they were like, "Hey, do you have any tabs?" So I, I just that was something like a simple thing that I put together. But Jake does kind of like I always say that if it's something like relevant and pertinent, it's usually Jake. But if it's something really stupid, it's probably either me or Zach. <laughs> so the three of us really like all all post. Uh, Jake kind of like runs it all. But I mean, we feel like uh, social media is, is so crucial to a band's progress and like reaching fans and engaging them and making it like a personal experience because what we do there's just no there's no rock stars it's just we're just people who do dumb stuff and like to play music and write songs so uh, we feel like it's something to really connect with fans and with other people uh, so it's something that we really take advantage of you know Luca and AJ are also banned from social media because <laughs> it just it doesn't go well ever the rhythm section does not use social media. Just, again, Jake does all the serious and pertinent stuff to the band, and then if it's a pineapple on pizza or, like, what Harry Potter house are you, that's one of us. <laughs> like, so. Now, being in a band, going on tour, having an album come out, what do your family and friends back home feel about this? And do they come out to the, your shows? What, what's the reaction there? I, I'm kind of the oddball in this category. Um, obviously, like, all of our friends come out and support. Um, and – George and Danny, oh, love them. But um, my family just, like, kind of recently came around to this when they finally saw us, like, actually touring all the time and doing that. Like, um, I think they came to one show when I was, like, 13, and I played acoustic at Mojo's in Chicago. But I don't think um, they've been to a show since. But, I mean, I love them, and they support me now. Um, they're, we're all just busy people. I'm, a, I'm one of six kids, so, like, they never really had time to come to shows. But – like, Luca's family always comes out to shows. Jake's family comes out to shows. TJ's family. Um, we haven't played Atlanta since I've been the band, but I'm, I would assume AJ's family comes to shows. Um, so I'm kind of the oddball out there, but, like, that's also something that never bothered me. It was just I'm, my family's a busy family, and but they've always loved and supported the music that I've played. Um, but, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's also a benefit that we have that um, we're all from different cities. Uh, Zach's only one from Chicago, um, natively. Uh so um, Jake and Luca are from the East Coast, and I'm from Cleveland, and Luca or uh, AJ's from Atlanta. So uh, we're able to kind of like stay with all of our friends and family all over like the the East Coast and Midwest, really. Um, but yeah, my parents have been like like really supportive uh, and have come to shows and like bought me my first guitar and amplifier and all that crap. So uh, I, I feel very very lucky, and uh, I know that they're excited to see things happening for us. You know, um, yeah, maybe one day, maybe make like a couple dollars off of it. Maybe one day, we'll see. I know my mom would be stoked about that. Maybe then my parents would come to a show. Yeah, <laughs> maybe if we were rich. Maybe if I was making money. <laughs> yeah, that's not. It's not gonna happen. But uh, our friend group is incredible. Um, shout out to George and Danny, who are our friends who come to every show. We have a lot of friends who come to all the shows. But Chicago is such a great music community. I mean. I feel very spoiled and very lucky to be a part of a community with so many bands and so many people who, like, really care and come to shows and who are supportive. So Chicago shout-out. Love you all. <laughs>